In front of me here is five different versions of fertilizer or water actually, because one is just not normal water, and the results that it yielded. So in today's video, we're gonna look at exactly which one yielded the best results and some tweaking that I did that makes this organic a heck of a lot better than that organic. Interestingly enough, I wasn't even expecting this one. So before I put these bottles away, let's go over what is in each bottle, kind of give you a rundown on what the five versions were. So the first version was miracle Grow All-Purpose. I know. It's horrible. With tap water, that part's important. Number two was an organic pro mix all purpose. And with that being said, I also did pH adjust it. Yes, that's right, folks. So here's the thing. My tap water is at like a eight, pH of eight most days, which is way too high for bioavailable nutrients. So when I actually add my fertilizer, I adjust the, the pH as necessary. So fun fact, when I put all-purpose miracle Grow in at the dosage that is required, it automatically drops my pH to that 5.5 to make all the nutrients in it more bioavailable. However, the organic fuel does not drop it enough and so I further drop it with the root farm pH down and then I test it until it's in the ideal range. That is number two. Number three is just regular old tap water. Number four is reverse osmosis water. So I have RO water in my house and I get many a comment about the chlorine factor in this, the heavy metal factor in this, and how it can affect the plants themselves. And I did a video on chlorine and chloramine just to kind of go through what it could or could not do. To prove my point even further from that video, I then used reverse osmosis water and this is the saddest looking plant I've ever seen on planet Earth, which is wild. I don't even why I have RO water in my house? Like why, why would I even use it? Because that is creepy what happened to this plant. And the last one is the organic fertilizer with zero pH adjustment to it. So just tap water with ProMix liquid organic. And you can see the plants in there are not only sad, but they're on their way out and they're probably not gonna make it to be totally honest. And we'll discuss why here in a little bit. So the next parameter that makes this interesting is that these are all in coconut coir pots, all in the same soil, all topped with vermiculite, because as you guys know, I love topping my seed starting with vermiculite. They're all basil from the same seed packet as well. They all were watered identically. So the way that I watered these is the way that you guys, the geek crew, actually tell me you water for the most part, because when I mention watering from above with a mister or a dripper of some sort or a very light waterfall, many of you said, absolutely not, I only bottom water. So what I did is I bottom watered all of these the exact same way. So they each had their own individual bowl that I then topped with water when I got low. There was a few times where it sunk down to nothing and I had to retop it, but never once did any of these dry out. So that was the other parameter. And I thought I have to do it that way because that's the way you guys do it. So this is the most relevant version of a study or a trial. I'm not even gonna pretend like this was like very refined, but it's the most relevant test run, if you will. Now here's the thing. I may or may not be qualified to talk about this, but I will give you some qualifications. So hopefully you semi-trust what I did here. And that is, I've been gardening since I was five years old. I have a bachelor of science in soil science, in which I also obviously learned plant science because let's face it, soil science isn't the answer to everything despite what we may think as soil scientists, if you will. And I also work in agriculture. So that is my background. Do with that information what you will. Does it mean much? No. Does it mean I was stupid enough to spend tens of thousands of dollars on a piece of paper? Yes. Yes, it does. That's what that mostly means. And now I make YouTube videos for a living. So yeah. Could the results change if I was to redo this? Maybe. Very possible. Okay. So let's first go through the elephant in the room. And that is Mr. Conventional All-Purpose miracle Grow. I'm paid for none of this, by the way. Pro-Mix Organic All-Purpose pH Adjusted. And then All-Purpose Not pH Adjusted. There's so much water on this thing. Just clean up your guys' dirty diaper here. We'll continue on with the video. And I could slice and dice this a million ways, but let's just have a high level discussion of what I do believe is going on here. So 
each plant was put into a waterlogged scenario. So all roots were exposed to something we call root hypoxia, if you will. Now, during the process of nutrients being in water, whether it's synthetic or organic, there is a microbe increase. It can come in the forms of fungal, bacterial, algae, you name it. It can come in the form of not beneficial. As the decompose and they consume the nutrients that they're trying to consume in that water logged soil and the water itself, we end up with a consumption of oxygen to keep that fire burning, if you will. So what this in turn makes is it makes for a environment that is lacking oxygen, anaerobic. So when someone says a soil is anaerobic, they don't just simply mean that the water is taking up all available pore space, so there's no room for air. What it actually means is that there, it's, it's got so much water, but no access to oxygen because of the staleness of the water. So if there was like an aerator or a bubbler in that dish, these results would be different. And the reason for that is because there's a constant food source for those microbes. Now we see this in nature, but it's obviously amplified in a closed tray experiment. The way we can back this up with research is that hydroponically, we have looked at the use of organic fertilizers. And it turns out that organic fertilizers in water don't decompose very well. And sometimes they don't decompose fully at all. And this can result in a plant that is both star for nutrients, an influx of microbes that have nothing to do, they're completely bored, and ultimately a poor growing plant or the demise of a plant. Now, the tap water plant doesn't have any nutrients in it. Because of that, the lack of microbial activity is what actually allowed this plant to do all right in a scenario where yes, it was waterlogged, but the microbial activity and the consumption of oxygen from that microbial activity is pretty darn low because there's no food in just regular tap water. So the reason for the difference between these two, the organic not pH adjusted and the organic pH adjusted is that the pH adjustment actually lowered it. This was quite high in the pH range. It actually tested at above my tap water range, which usually doesn't happen. So I don't know, it may be the size of the container or whatever, but anyways, it tested a little bit higher. That in turn very likely caused a massive explosion of microbial activity, which really quickly consumed all the oxygen present and and made for a very stale water environment faster than you could blink, which, it, which obviously resulted in a very sad plant. The other option was the already pH adjusted organic. And the reason why this very likely did slightly better is because it was pH adjusted to a 5.5, the same 5.5 that this one ends up at naturally when it's added to my tap water. Now this 5.5, probably did a little bit better because it was in a slightly acidic environment, which in turn can actually dampen down some microbial activity because just like plant roots, actual microbes have very specific pH ranges in which they like to exist. So obviously it took out some of the bad guys, which in turn resulted in less oxygen uptake and a healthier, happier plant. Now there's no signs of nutrient deficiencies here. There's no signs of root rot. When I actually smell it, it smells fresh. It doesn't smell rotting. This one smells like actual sewage rot. This one actually is totally fine. It's going to perform. It's going to become a beautiful ba basil plant one day. The reason for the smaller growth comes down to the fact that the nutrients in this organic formula is not as bioavailable. There's some work that has to go into the decomposition of your organic fertilizer still. I've said this many a time, and this is kind of proof in the pudding right here. So while it's not harming the plant, obviously the pH adjustment uh, came out just fine. That's the reason for the difference in the two. And it's important to note that while this one had an excessive level of nutrients, particularly nitrogen, you'll note on a miracle Grow formula is very high. It's not leggy. It's not too much because if it was too much, these wouldn't be like a, you can kind of, it wouldn't be a firm leaf. It is a firm leaf. And these inner notes would be much longer and they're not. And these were all seated at the same density. So the actual miracle Grow formula isn't harming the plant. It's not an excessive amount because I'm following the instructions. And again, these 
None of these companies want you to fail at gardening because if they fail or if you fail, you're not going to buy their product again. So that doesn't even make sense when people say, yeah, miracle Grow kills everything. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. They don't want to kill your plant. They want your plant to look like this. And I'm not sponsored by miracle Grow, So if let's talk about how water is reverse osmosis. And what that means is it is completely of any minerals. That means magnesium, calcium, all of them. You combine that with the fact that an RO water actually technically has a negative cation exchange capacity. You very quickly realize what's happening here. So when we combo the reverse osmosis water that is devoid of nutrients with that negative charge, we're actually not only pulling out, we're not only starving the plant of nutrients for the future, but we're actually pulling nutrients out of the existing soil. So we are making a soil that has absolutely zero minerals in it, which in turn results in very sick, very sad seedlings. It doesn't smell, given it does not smell, and it's probably because there's not much microbial activity even taking place, because there's no real nutrients to uptake because the water probably beat it to it. But needless to say, I did this because I just wanted to see what happened because I'd never done it before and I knew that it was going to kill it, but I didn't realize like it was going to kill it that much, which is interesting. They did germinate though, which goes to show you that the plant itself will emit the cotyledons and those initial roots just via its natural energy stores inside the seed that will then propel it for a period of time before it actually needs access to nutrients. So I did find that kind of interesting. So the tap water one looks very similar to the organic pH adjusted one. Only difference being, I would argue that the tap water one is slightly lighter green compared to the one with organic fertilizer. And while it's not a huge deal, it's definitely starting to get some what we would call chlorosis effect, which is essentially just lack of very specific nutrients. For example, like iron, I can see possibly a calcium deficiency because we've got kind of this darkening of the leaves in some spaces. And if I was to continue on this route, I would just have like a very poor plant stand, if you will, but the plant would still do okay. And again, the reason for that is because there is going to be some nutrients in that actual potting soil to propel the plant forward. We've got a tap water that has various different minerals in it, and those minerals aren't taking away from the soil. They're not adding much, but they're not taking from the soil by any means. And that in turn results in a very low microbial activity content, because despite popular belief, synthetics actually do increase microbial activity because the microbes don't give a flying foreskin about where the nutrients come from. All they want is to eat and so they will eat both forms of it and yeah so because of that though we don't have like a, a nutri it doesn't like yeah it doesn't it, it's it doesn't smell it's actively growing it's not like it's rotting there's no like root hypoxia so yeah this one's quite interesting and it just goes to show you do you need fertilizer not really like I you should but is it a big deal no it's not a huge deal this organic grow one though holy ronies she so if I was a geek crew member and I wanted to bottom water my plants for ease of use, which of course do it, I would personally go for a synthetic fertilizer. You don't have to do miracle Grow all purpose by any stretch of the imagination, but some sort of synthetic liquid formula, probably your best idea if you're gonna bottom water. You can upgrade it when you go to transplant it um, or you choose not to bottom water anymore, you could go into like a more organic version. That's completely fine. Um, with that being said, pH balancing, just because my miracle grow brought my tap water to the correct pH does not mean your miracle grow is gonna bring your tap water to the correct pH. We all have different pHs of what comes out of the tap. So you actually need to pH test it and then determine if you need to pH adjust it. I do not think you're gonna get the same results from miracle grow if the pH is not in and around that most bioavailable zone. So in some parts of the world, you're gonna have to actually adjust the pH on the miracle Grow. I'm just lucky enough where I don't have to. Same goes for the actual organic as well. Some cases you may not need to adjust. It'll just come out of the tap and be perfectly fine right off the hop. And in other cases, it's not going to come out of the tap and be okay, right off the hop, you're actually going to need to page adjust it to kind of get it into that realm of good. So anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up, subscribe, hit that share button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.